Hey Wampers, in this video we are creating a cute little camping scene, including a lot of tips and tricks on the way, so feel free to follow along and let's get started. So first off, I want to change the backdrop straight away to match the mood of the scene that I have in mind, which is like a campfire scene at night, so I think that's a lovely color for it. And then I'm going to grab a cylinder primitive from the top bar menu. When we hover over the sides of it, we can scale it down to be more flat. And then I'm just rescaling it from the center to make it bigger. At the right in our properties menu, we can round up our shape, which really helps to get the cozy and cute kind of style. And at the top, we can change the color. First off, I'm choosing a very dark brown with a lot of roughness. This is for the first layer of dirt for the kind of platform that I'm creating. Uh, I'm then just copying this object, which you can do by holding down Alt and just dragging it out there, making this a bit lighter, and then also doing this once more, just copying once again. You can also copy with just Control C, Control V. And that one, I'm just rounding up completely and giving it a green color to make some grass. So in that way, we have a lovely platform where we can put our scene on. When we then select all of our primitives in the scene list, we can turn it into one union, which is basically like a group. So you can move it all together or also lock it. So in this way, we can't navigate it anymore. And it is not in the way for the other things that we're creating. So next up, I'm getting out a new cube and I'm scaling it to be more thinner. Um, you can also scale equally from both sides, holding down shift while doing so. And I'm rounding this up as well, giving it a color. I'm going for a light purplish tone here with some roughness and high translucency. That means the light can travel through the object a little more. I'm then turning on the mirror in the object's properties menu. If we then drag it to the right, we can see that it's activated and at the corners of the primitive, we can rotate them. So that makes up a nice tent. And now we can just copy what we exactly have here and just transform it back into a cylinder. Just change the color and in that way we create some really nice wooden pillars that are kind of like coating it or stabilizing the tent. And since the mirror is fading in the center, we need to make one more copy of those and rotate them the other way. I'm then also changing the rotation back to zero to have it in a straight way again and then just rotating it to be flat to create some ground or like mattress that's like in the, in the tent here. And I'm also using that exact shape once again, rotate it upwards to create the wall or, or the entrance of this tent here. Let's make this a little bit more flat and then just rotating it inwards to fit our shape here. So next up, let's get out a new curve primitive. And the first thing we do is drag this curve into the tent union that we created. And then deleting the second point, go to the curve settings. Let's actually see it here. And then I'm adding a little bit of roundness, full density and reduce scoop strength to around five. Now I'm changing the color to something that fits the tent. I'm making it slightly darker. Just, I feel like that gives it some shading effect almost. And then I'm bringing it in there. Now you see it's already melting a little bit with the other ones. If we turn it into a negative, we see that it is also subtracting from the shapes we don't want it to. So the first thing we need to do is actually find the shape that we want to subtract from. We bring that to the top and the curve below that because negatives will only affect primitives that are above it in the scene list. So they don't affect all the ones that are below it. So next we bring it into position. Um, here I just want to make a little bit of an opening in the tent. I'm copying the curve point, just simply holding down Alt while dragging it out there. On Mac that would be a shift as well. And then the last point I'm making super small and thin, so it's yeah, just the ending of it. So next up, let's create some wood. And for that, I'm using a rounded cylinder. I copy it once more, make it smaller but longer, turn it into a negative. We can also goop it out a little bit from the inside. And then I'm changing the color to a lighter tone to give it that kind of effect that it's more light on the inside. So I'm just taking our negative here, copy it once more, turn it back into a positive and just adjust it accordingly. 
And here we go, a piece of wood, basically. We can then also just take um, those three primitives that we used for it and turn them into a group that we can just call wood. And in that way, we can just easier clone it around. So we just make a copy, lay it next to it, another copy, put it on top. And like that, we ha easily have like a stack of wood that we can just place next to the tent or also use for a campfire. So let's make that next. So for that, I just lay out a few of those pieces that we just created and then start making the flame by using a sphere based curve. And I'm starting with the first point to be very dark red and then going lighter and brighter um, also with the orange to yellow tones to even almost white tones, um, which gives it a really nice flame kind of effect and also gives it some personality gradients in general with curves look really, really awesome. So I highly recommend you guys to also use them. So once we have that, let's actually go ahead and create some easy nature elements. And I'll just throw very quick tips for that for you guys. So the first one is that we can create very easy rocks by just using spheres and sticking them a little bit into the ground, giving it like a blue grayish color or whatever color you want to use for them. And we can easily copy them around, make them look different by rescaling them and placing them. So next I'm creating a very simple pine tree just using a cylinder based curve with two points. The first point is very big and the upper point is very thin and small and that already creates that simple shape. Now one cool thing that we can also do is go back into the curve settings and change it to a cube based curve which might make for interesting stylized look. I'm then also adding some gradients that I was just talking about just making one of the points a bit different in, in its color. And then we can simply place them and rescale them a little bit to create that kind of variety and yeah, feeling of a natural forest. I think that looks quite lovely, very easy to extend as well. And then I just did the same thing with creating some foliage, which is based on three curve points, one small, one thicker and one smaller at the top again with some gradient as well. So once everything is placed and some cute faces are added, let's also add some lighting. So first off, I'm turning off the floor grid, changing the globe lighting, really have a look at which one fits your scene, play around with the exposure as well. And then we can add some individual lights that you can find in the same menu. I am lighting up the environment a little bit by the flame and then also making a copy of the light, changing its color to a colder tone to from the outside. So we have a contrast between cold and warm lights. I then also added some sparkles because I thought it would fit the scene. The campfires even kind of looking at the stars now. I think it's a lovely little touch that also yeah, it just fits the whole cozy and cute kind of style that we've just created here. And then once we're happy with our finished result, we can go to the top right and click on publish. Here we can choose our thumbnail, our title, add the hashtag easy if you enjoyed this tutorial or found it easy. And then you can also share your WAMP in the channels and choose your copyright settings if you don't want others to remix your project. And with that, thank you so much for watching. We can't wait to see your versions of this on the Discover page. And I'll see you in the next video.